This presentation is on maximizing extractable value from automated market makers. My name is James Chang from the Technical University of Denmark, and this is joint work with Massimo Bartoletti from the University of Calgary and Alberto Luz La Fuente from the Technical University of Denmark. Minor extractable value occurs due to the powers that the miner has. When a user submits a transaction to the blockchain network, these transactions are gossiped through the network and we can model their pending status as a public transaction queue. The miner has the power to build blocks from transactions uh, taken from this uh, public transaction queue. In particular, it can infer the user intentions from these pending transactions. And with the new blocks, it can append any valid transaction sequence from the pending transaction queue or injected transactions of its own. The rational miner will always optimize for profit and therefore attempt to generate the sequence that does so. Minor extractable value has been studied in quite some detail by recent work. A common attack is the automatic market maker sandwich attack, where a honest user action, a swap action, is sandwiched between two minor injected swaps. The MEV taxonomy was first introduced by papers such as Flashpoints 2.0, and the paper SLK Transparent, Transparent Dishonesty. More recently, MEV has been quantified on public blockchains in papers such as quantifying BEV or high frequency trading on DEXs. We pose the question, what is the maximum extractable value for DeFi applications for given DeFi application design? assuming a perfect minor adversary computing the optimal solution and thereby extracting the maximal possible value. The main contribution of our paper is the first optimal MEV solution for automatic market makers. Our solution includes extractable value for all AMM actions, including swap, deposit, and redeem. And interesting enough, our solution will always emit redeem actions as these do not contribute value to the miner. In contrast to previous work, uh, our work does not rely on heuristics and uh, represents an optimal solution. We note the solution is an upper bound, an upper MEV bound, meaning that it is in the setting of zero transaction fees or zero AMM fees, and we assume an unlimited block size. We note that our solution is interesting nonetheless because it represents a theoretical maximum bound which can be extracted from a given application design and assumes the perfect uh, adversary. We believe the proof strategy can also support analysis of other DeFi applications with similar mechanics. We briefly recap the automatic market maker actions. So firstly, we have the swap action authorized by user A, where A desires to swap V0 units of Tau0 in return for at least V1 units of Tau1. Uh, so assuming initial state uh, plotted here, where the reserves of the AMM are as follows, currently at R0 units of tau0 and R1 uh, units of tau1, then the reserves of the AMM are updated as follows, namely V0 units indicated by the action here are added to the reserves, and the reserves are updated such that their uh, product remains constant, shown uh, with this curve here. This constant product curve here. Note that the uh, received amount by user A, V1 prime units of tau1, must be uh, greater or equal to the V1 parameter indicated uh, with the action or authorized with the action. We can then have a look at the change in user A's balance as this action is being executed. So since this is a swap, uh, the user is swapping between two atomic tokens. That means it's uh, the the amount uh, v zero of, of type tau zero is subtracted from its balance, and it receives uh, v one prime units of tau one, um, as computed uh, as shown as, as as above. In a deposit action, the user is supplying uh, atomic tokens to the system, allowing for future users to perform swaps. So here, the user is uh, depositing v zero units of type tau zero and v1 units of tau1. If we assume initial state uh, shown here, 
where the ratio of reserves is R0 over R1, then the deposit action is only enabled if the ratio of added tokens, namely back V0 and V1, is equal to the ratio of current reserves. The change in A's balance uh, following the execution of a deposit action is shown as follows. The atomic token balance is subtracted, is reduced by the amounts V0 and V1, because these are the amount of atomic tokens being added to the system. Um, however, A obtains uh, V units of minted tokens of type Tau0, Tau1. The supply of minted tokens is increased by the same amount, and the amount of newly minted V, um, the mu newly minted um, mint tokens is proportional to the increase in reserves resulting from the deposit. We can then consider the redeem action, where user A desires to send V units of minted token type Tau0, Tau1 in return for atomic tokens Tau0 and Tau1. So in this case, the amount returned by the redeem action is given by V0 and V1. And so if we consider the change in uh, A's balance, we can observe that the balance of atomic tokens is increased by V0 and V1, and the balance of minted tokens is reduced by V, as indicated by its action uh, parameter up here. The supply of minted tokens is reduced by the same amount, we say that these minted tokens are burned, and the amount of returned to uh, atomic tokens is proportional to the amount of minted tokens being uh, destroyed in this action. Next, we define the MEV game. The MEV game is parameterized by the pending user transaction set X and the initial state gamma. The initial state gamma is given by the reserves of the EMM namely R0 units of tau0 and R1 units of tau1, as well as the balances of the uh, users in the system. The solution uh, lambda to the MEV game is performed on initial state gamma, resulting in a state gamma prime. The solution lambda is constructed from transactions in the pending user transaction pool X and uh, any authorized action by the adversary M. The solution must increase, the optimal solution must increase M's wealth such that it is maximized after executing lambda on the initial state. We note that the adversary does not hold any minted tokens in the initial state, meaning it is not initially a provider of liquidity, and that the solution lambda is not constrained by the adversary M's initial balance, meaning that it has unlimited liquidity to perform the attack. We provide a preview of our game solution, which we call the Dagwood Sandwich. Our game solution lambda consists of multiple layers, resembling the multi-layered sandwich type uh, preferred by the comic character Dagwood Bumstead. Our game solution consists of, firstly, the intermediate layers, where each user transaction is front-run by an enabling swap by the adversary M. And we note that the order of intermediate layers does not affect optimality, yet they must be com uh, computed greedily one after the other. Um, the solution is concluded with a final layer where the miner minimizes the minted token prices and, and where the intuition is that the miner leaves no arbitrage opportunity behind. We note that the redeem actions are always dropped as they, they contribute no profit or value to the miner, as we will show in the subsequent slides. Before we argue the optimality of our solution, uh, first a couple definitions. The user wealth is defined as follows. The wealth of user A in state gamma is given by its wealth component of atomic tokens in the respective state, plus the wealth component of minted tokens in the same state. Here, the wealth component is given by um, the balance and the respective the balance of a specific token type and its respective price. Here, we note that the atomic token price is always fixed; it is given at the initial state of the game. In contrast the price of minted token varies as the state of the AMM progresses throughout the solution. So the question that we pose here, which is answered in the following slides, is whether M, the adversary M, can minimize this to, to, to reduce um, the wealth of the user and thereby increasing its own wealth. We note the following wealth preservation lemma, which states that the wealth of all users, including the adversary M, 
A is maintained in any two reachable state, gamma A or gamma B. This implies that M's strategy can be to reduce the wealth of all other users in order to increase its own. Next, we define the price of minted tokens. The price of a minted token type tau0 tau1 in state gamma is given as follows. Um, if the reserves in this state gamma of the AMM is R0 and R1, then the price of the minted token type in this state must be R0 times the price of tau0 plus R1 times the price of tau1 over the total supply of this uh, minted token type. The intuition here is that the price indicates the redeemable value for every single minted token in the state gamma. So if the user A is to perform a redeem, this is the redeemable value that it would obtain. Next, we look at specific properties of minted token prices. Firstly, we have price equality, which states that for any uh, two states, gamma A and gamma B, the minted token price will be equal if the reserve ratio is equal as well. This is significant since that the price of the minted token is now just a function of its reserves ratio R. Secondly, we have the price minimization lemma, which states that for any state gamma, the price of a minted token type is minimized if and only if the reserve ratio is equal to the inverse of the prices of its respective tokens. If we plot all states, reserve states, in an AMM with a specific uh, reserve ratio which fulfills this condition, uh, let's, let's, let's note that the dark line shown in the plot before, below, then any state that uh, lies, a uh, reserve state that lies along this line will have the lowest possible um, uh, minted token price. The price of the minted token is minimized if the reserve state lies on that line. We can now describe the final layer of our solution, where the miner always minimizes the prices of minted, to minted tokens. So here the miner performs a single swap, uh, where the reserves of the uh, AMM are updated such that R0 over, over R1 equal the price of token type tau1 over the price of token type tau0. The intuition here is that the final sandwich layer removes all remaining arbitrage. We can also observe that the minimum price, p min, of minted token type tau0 and tau1 is actually already determined by the prices of the atomic token types tau0 and tau1, uh, which are fixed in the initial state gamma. We now define user gain, which is critical in proving the optimality of our solution. The gain of user A uh, on executing the solution lambda on initial, state, on initial state gamma is given as follows. There is a gain in the atomic token wealth component. Here, the gain is simply the changes of balances in, uh, of, of to, uh, atomic tokens multiplied by their respective price, which is fixed throughout the execution. Then we have the gain, gain in minted token wealth, where the change in the uh, minted token wealth is given by the final balances of minted tokens multiplied by the final price, namely p-min, um, uh, subtracting the initial uh, uh, wealth in minted tokens, which is the initial price of minted tokens multiplied by the initial price of minted tokens. We note that the prices can be reasoned as follows. The prices of atomic tokens is fixed throughout um, the execution. And the prices of the mint token types may vary, but they are uh, fixed by the initial state gamma. When we uh, observe the effect that the user actions have on their respective gain, we note that the user swap only affects the atomic wealth. And furthermore, we note the following lemma, namely that the step gain uh, of a single transaction of type deposit and redeem uh, result in a gain of zero. These are important because as we compute the uh, solution for the miner, we do so by observing the gain that the user experience experiences while executing the solution. If the gain of all users is minimized, 
then the gain of the miner must be maximized. Therefore, that must be the solution. We now describe the intermediate layer of our solution, which extracts value from swap actions submitted by users. In a swap action submitted by the user A, the user A sends v0 units of tau, tau 0 in return for at least v1 units of tau 1. In order to minimize the amount of tokens received by the user, the miner can perform a uh, front run uh, prior to the user action, which ensures that the user re re receives the minimum amount of uh, tokens of type tau 1, namely v1. We can now observe the effect of the intermediate swap layer on the gain of user A. If this layer is executed on initial state gamma, we can see that the gain is minimized if the amount of tokens received by the um, uh, user A is minimized. If furthermore the gain of, of, of executing this layer is less than zero, then it is always included in the overall solution, as its gain contribution is negative. Here we can also argue layer commutativity, meaning that the position of this swap layer in the overall solution does not affect its optimality. This is given because the parameters v0 and v1 are fixed by the swap action itself, and the prices of the atomic tokens which affect the gain of the layer A are also fixed in the initial state gamma. The deposit intermediate layer uh, is as follows. Here, the deposit of user A can only be enabled or can only execute if the reserve ratio is equal to the ratio of its parameters v0 and v1. In order, for, in order to enable such a deposit, the uh, adversary can create a front-run swap which updates the AMM reserves so that they are equal to the, to the ratio of v0 and v1. We can observe the following effect on the gain of user A when executing such a layer. When executing a layer low, as shown on the first line, the gain is zero, uh, as, as stated in the previous level. We note, however, that the layer is executed in a solution which always includes a final price minimization swap by the miner, as shown in the second line. Here, the gain obtained from the atomic tokens does not change because the prices remain fixed. However, since the prices of the minted tokens change, in other words, they are minimized, the gain from the minted tokens must decrease. So the effect of the uh, deposit layer in an overall uh, game solution must always have a negative contribution because of this price minimization. And therefore, it is included in the solution uh, by the adversary, by the miner. We argue layer commutativity similarly as before. The amount uh, of minted tokens uh, received for the deposit V is determined by the initial state and parameters V0 and V1. And the minimal, minimized price of the minted token type is also determined by the initial state gamma. Finally, we have the redeem layer. Here, the redeem action can always be executed in any reserve state. It is always enabled. Uh, we can see in the first line below how the gain of the redeem action is always zero. That is, uh, that is uh, given by a previous lemma. And that the gain contribution from minted tokens will increase if the redeem action is executed in a, uh, in a game solution, which concludes with a price minim minimization swap by the miner M. This is because the price of the minted token type is, um, is decreased. Therefore, the negative expression on the right increases. Thus, the gain contribution for the overall solution is positive. And the intuition here is that A can redeem at a higher minted token price, therefore obtaining more value, that is then held in atomic tokens. Um, and and this, this value contribution is fixed because the prices don't change. That is why M will always drop the redeem action. The full solution to the MEV gain um, is computed layer by layer, uh, but the order of the layers, uh, intermediate layers, does not matter, as mentioned before. It does not affect the optimality. Here, the front-running or enabling swap by the miner in each label is computed on the um, state resulting from the previous layer. 
We refer to the paper for the um, actual uh, formulas for the parameters of each of these enabling swaps, as well as the price minimization swap in the final layer. Finally, for future work, we consider the following model extensions as interesting avenues to extend the NAV game. Firstly, one could consider liquidity positions in the AMM model, which are uh, deposits made by liquidity providers intended for specific price ranges or exchange rate ranges. One could also consider different constant functions. Uh, we have constantly considered the constant product uh, constant function for our AMM analysis. And we could also modify the MEV gain with additional uh, constraints, such as block size, which limits the length of the solution lambda. And finally, one could also extend the model with fees, namely swap fees or transaction fees. We thank you for your attention.